All right, and let's go. Uh, hi everyone, so welcome to the second session of Unicraft Summer Workshop. Uh, we're going to delve today into the, uh, I think we talked with Bala yesterday uh, about how we can make the items that you saw running on Craft Cloud also run locally. And we can do that uh, using Craft. Uh, instead, of, instead of using Craft Cloud Run, uh, Craft Cloud Deploy or Craft Cloud Instance Start, what we're going to do today is going to be Craft Cloud Run. So let me show you that. Uh, if we go, uh, yeah, here we have an example. Let me just give me the, the simple Nginx one. Um, I think we should have had an Nginx simple one. Just a second, let me see if I'm on the right, uh, yeah. The second. Okay. Um, yeah, it seems I don't have Nginx here available, not sure why. Okay, so if for example I go to Redis, uh, here in Redis, the way this happens is uh, I see in craft, craft file that I'm using a, a runtime. This runtime is called Redis. Uh, and I'm using this Docker file as the file system. So if I look here in Docker file, this is the file system. It's basically nothing out of the ordinary. It, it, it does nothing. It's simply pulling what's already part of um, uh, of the uh, of of the runtime uh, the runtime itself, and if I look at the README, I can see hey if you're going to if you want to run uh, well if you want to run Redis you're going to have to um, use this command, and if you use this command uh, a Redis server is going to start locally. So let's let's go for this. Okay, it's searching for that Redis runtime. It's going to pull it once it finds it. Yeah, it's pulling it. This is the Unicraft Torque, so this is a this is a open is an open source item. And now after pulling it, it's going to then uh, have it available locally. And after having having a bit having it available locally, it can run it, right? Uh, note that there is no build step here. There's no. Um, uh, there's nothing required. The runtime itself, what's what's being pulled here, uh, contains the um, uh, the the unikernel core itself and the application file system, nicely wrapped together, such that you're just required to pull them and then to run them. And that's going to be, you're going to then have available uh, the, um, the Redis runtime. This takes a bit because I'm, uh, I'm not sure about my connection. It seems I have uh, about 18, uh, you can see here, 18% uh, CPU usage. It's because probably of the recording and Discord and the other. So that's probably why it takes a bit uh, to get this, uh, this image. It's probably also a larger image itself. So let me just do something here. There is a command that's called craft code image ls. Let me see if I know it's not this one craft package ls minus minus remote. I think that was the name. Okay, let's wait for it. Okay, so this 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 worked. Okay, so what this did, this created your um, uh, your uh, Unicra your uh, Redis server, it's now running locally. It's built on top of the, the latest version of Unicraft. This is 0.17. And now it's listening on port 6379. Six, six, so what I can do now, th these were basically the images. So what I just pulled was the Redis 72 one. So this is a 25 megabytes image. It took a bit to, to capture it. And uh, it pulled it and it ran it. So now if I'm going to do something like Redis CLI uh, and I'm going to do minus host, the host is going to be my local host. It's going to connect to it. I can ping it. Uh, I can set A1, I can get A, set B2, get B, right? Get B. So it's working right. This is Redis here running on top of this instance. Uh, I'm going to close it, so I'm going to use Control C. Very important here. When I ran this, I ran this using Craft Run, 
minus minus rm. This is very similar to Docker. This means that now if I'm going to craft PS or craft PS minus A, uh, okay, I have an older one here. Let me remove that. Craft remove all. Okay, so I had this older version of Node that was running uh, one day ago. I think maybe this is something I started yesterday. I'm not sure. Uh, because I used this craft uh, 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 rrun minus minus rm, it removed the instance that I, ju I just created. So now if I'm going to use craft run again, but I wouldn't use this. So I keep it like that. It's then going, the um, uh, the image itself is now pulled. It does it, it won't pull it again. And now what it's going to do is it started it. And now if I do a control C, and if I go here, hmm, well, that's weird. I would have expected. Ah, okay, yeah, it, it, so it's stopping it, but it's not being removed, right? So note note this, I, I was really, it, it would also be probably started. If you run something uh, without minus minus RM and use control C, that instance won't be removed, right? So this instance is going to have to be removed by hand. I can use craft RM, I'm going to use the name of it and then simply remove it. If any of you have had to toy with Docker, this is very similar to that. If you use Docker run, Docker PS, craft run, craft PS, whatever, the, the interface is supposed to be similar. So this is the way you're going to start to remove um, instances locally. I did this uh, using uh, um, uh, using uh, Redis. I can go into some other items. So for example, uh, let's go into, let's go into Go, for example. In Go, I have uh, a very simple example. This is called, it's a server, server.go, which points a by world on uh, port 8080. So for this, I look in the craft file, the runtime I'm, I'm using, it's called base. So it's a runtime, a basic runtime. And the file system is based on a Docker file. And then when, when, when starting, it's going to use the slash server command. If I look in the Docker file, this is a bit more complex now. So this is where we, we, where we delve a bit into Docker. Uh, if you haven't toyed it with Docker files, this is the recipe that builds you a file system. This builds you an application. So what we have here is it says uh, from, uh, I, I'm going to get all the tools I, I require from a remote uh, Docker uh, setup. This is Golang. I'm going to copy the local server.go file that you saw earlier uh, here on the, on the container. And then I'm going to use go build to, to create this one. What I'm then going to do, I'm going to start from a, Z, from a scratch container, from the basic, basic container and I'm going to copy the executable and the libraries. And something very important here, which we didn't do so far, these libraries are, don't, are actually not required. This is because if you check here at the linker flags, I'm using static pi. Static pi means that this executable is static, meaning it doesn't have any sort of dependencies on a, uh, on a library. So it's, it's, it can be used by itself. So with this in mind, I can now run, I can check the readme as, as well. I can use craft run with this part to get this application going. So I get this, uh, the base was already there. It's now building the root file system. This is being built based on the Docker file that we, um, uh, we saw earlier. It's now pulling the, um, the go uh, go go runtime the go base system and that uh, that would be pulled it's going to build the executable as we saw earlier so this is uh pulling of the go what was it 1.21 bookworm uh, um, uh, basic file system let's wait for that all righty this is done
okay it's now going to uh, run the compile step so this takes a bit longer the first time because it's pulling the entire file system and doing everything now it's going to run the build command out of which the server executable here is going to be built and then that would be it. then it's going to run this server on top of unicraft let's wait for it it takes a bit to build it because this is a static pi binary so it's going to be a larger file we're also going to check this out a bit but after that it's going to simply run it Okay, it's done. And now we created the file system. It's going to export it and voila, now it's going to run it. So what you now see here, this is a running of that Go based server with Unicraft. Uh, this is using an older version of Unicraft 0.16.3. So then we're going to um, go here and now we're going to use curl localhost 8080 and it's by world if i'm going to close this and then click again it's no longer available because this already st stopped craft ps minus a nothing is available all of these items have uh have uh, have been removed right so note here the steps we did one of them was pull the base runtime the second one was build the application file system from the docker file using the docker file and this had two steps the first step was pull the uh, docker library image which in our case was go 1.21 bookworm or something like that bookworm i think it was something like that okay and then 2.2 was copy the required files in the docker file system this meant server.go okay and finally top step 2.3 was build the required files into the output executable which in our case was server, All right? So those are the steps that uh, that were done there. And finally, after you do this, the third step is run the application on top of Unicraft. And of course, finally, fourth, use query the application. Okay, let's just take a bit, take a bit of step back and look from the top of the tower and chew on this, digest this, and let's see if there are any questions from your side. I see there's a message on the channel, just a sec. Uh, could you explain maybe a bit more in depth what step number three means, run the application on top of Unicraft? Uh, can you repeat that? Can you explain step number three a bit more in depth, like uh, going into the details? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sure. So I see there is a uh, there is a, a sync problem. Is my sound in being interrupted? So whenever I'm talking, uh, do I get interruption? Viorel, you mentioned that on the chat. I see. Mm. Yeah, I see. Maybe let let me see if I'm able to to check what's uh, what's causing this load on the system. Mm, yeah, it's Chromium 
wasting it. it's OBS. Yeah, it's because I'm doing also the recording. You can see all the CPUs are are maxed out. Let me try to close some some windows. Maybe that will make things better. Just a sec. Okay, let me close some browser tabs. Just a second. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the best I can do. I, I close most of the browser tabs. Seems to be a bit better, but yeah, it's still the, uh, the recording service. This is consuming quite a lot I, I will I will check it out to see if I can make um, OBS sorry this is much better I can see you uh, in sync. Ah, okay yeah okay so maybe this is uh, this is better okay I think maybe some of those tabs on on Chrome I'm not sure I, I just installed uh, Ubuntu 2404 lately and it's a mess it's so it's slow it consumes a lot of memory really really bad experience i probably going to revert to an to an earlier version or switch to something else uh, when i use uh, firefox it it's com it completely boggles up in chrome itself isn't uh, isn't that that good itself okay so uh, you mentioned about going more into step number three okay um let me tell you what's happening then. So for this, I need to go into the internals of Unicraft. Uh, you, whenever I build something, there's a Unicraft directory that's being created. And here you have the build one. OK. And what you have, what you see here, this is the actual application file system that's being constructed. This rootfs cache, it, it's not something we, uh, we are interested about. If I look here, so this is the, uh, if I look CPIO minus ITV, this one, uh, this is what the actual um, uh, root file system consists of. And as expected, this is only the server executable. And that's something you would probably expect because what's happening here, whenever I use the Docker file, I get this, okay? Now, what I could do here is I can do something like instead of uh, running craft uh, when running craft run just a second oh craft run okay I can use minus minus log level debug minus 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 log type basic uh, something was connecting to okay so yeah something i would also need to do is just to have the um the second um uh to start a build kit instance this this will make things faster um if i'm going to do this okay it's now going to go through all of these steps it's going to build the file system and just for those who are more interested, this is the lengthier command that we're going to use. So what's actually happening behind the scenes in the run step, this is something we're going to look further uh, in the next uh, sessions. This is behind the scenes. But since you asked it, I'm going to just go a, a bit into that. So what this does, it, it runs QEMU and then this QEMU is going to uh, append these arguments, which means these are the environment variables. And this is the, um, the virtual file system we're going to use. And it says it's going to mount an initial RAM disk. And you can see here 
the initial RAM disk is going to use is the one that I just showed you earlier, right? So when I did this init, init RD minus CPIO stuff earlier on, this is the actual file system. And the kernel, the kernel is part of the runtime. So whenever you want to get the runtime, the runtime itself consists of the, uh, cons contains the kernel, the Unicraft pre-built version, and this is what you're going to use. So basically when you use craft run, the options you're, care you're, uh, you're interested on are, you're going to have the command line arguments, you're going to have the initial RAM disk, which is the file system, and you're going to have the kernel, which is the actual Unicraft core that's going to be used to run the application, right? And uh, this would be the same for Redis. So, for example, if I, uh, if I would go to Redis and I would use, what was the command for Redis? It was this one, right? If I use minus minus log level debug minus minus log type basic okay it would run something similar right so if we move here uh, it runs chemo this is the um, these are the arguments going to use it's it also has command line arguments so it's going to run this command ready server etc server.conf actually th this this is something uh, we also were running here we were using server so after dash dash, you have server, the command is being run, okay? And other than that, we have the initial RAM disk here. So this is the file system, the Redis file system. And this one is the actual kernel that's being used. Note that this is another kernel. This is not the kernel that we used for, uh, um, uh, for base, for the Go. This is the a kernel that contains the actual Redis runtime. So if I were to go here and use, uh, just to show you here, use ls minus on, uh, no, it was ls minus lh slash tmp slash craft minus run minus 24. Let's see if this is okay. Okay, uh, this is a 24 megabytes kernel because this is the Redis one. If you recall when we used that remote thingy for Redis, uh, this was actually 25 megabytes. That was the runtime. So this is the actual kernel that's being pulled out of Redis. Uh, where was it? Here. Redis, so this is 25 megabytes. The base image, the base kernel that we used, this is uh, 1.6 megabytes. So for example, if we went to the, the Go example, HTTP Go, and if we used that command we, we used earlier, this one, and we now checked what the kernel itself is, is it's over here, okay? So this one, is 1.6 megabytes. So this is a smaller one because as, as we said earlier, this is the base image, this one here. It's not the Redis image that's 25, me 25 megabytes that's already here, okay? So uh, I'm not sure if this properly answers your question, but this is a bit what's happening behind the scenes. I don't want at this point to go into a lot of details because I know it's a lot of information and already we're talking about Docker, Docker files, Unikernels, runtimes. And it's, it's a bit at this point, I know it's a lot to chew, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of actually what's happening behind the scenes. The scenes. What I would request you is to not be scared of the amount of info. We're going to delve into that in the future, but kind of get a glimpse of what's happening behind the scenes. Any other questions? Perfect. Okay, 
uh, then moving on uh, let's um, let's continue what you saw here this was kind of let's say the the easy side of things namely looking into applications where we already had the uh, the runtime right so we are using these runtimes but how do these runtimes come to be okay so if we look into the uh, uh, in our repositories there's a repo that is this also going to be part of this guide we're going to ask you to follow which is using the application catalog and here we're going to go into github unicraft catalog this is our application catalog and in this application catalog you have let's say two types of applications we call them uh, library and examples there's also the native thing this requires a bit of restructuring let's call it so in the example ones this these are things you already know so http go anything we saw so if you go here and you're going to look into the craft file of each application you're going to have a runtime for each but how do these runtimes get to be built? Well, these are built from the library item. So the libraries, these are the core parts where these runtimes are created such that you can use them as pre-built versions for your future work, okay? So this means that if I'm now going to go here, I'm in the catalog and I'm going to go into the libraries, these are the initial phases of of the of of the each application and that's how runtimes are created so for that let's go into an nginx for example and let's go into 1.25 nginx you're going to see here there's a big difference between the craft files we saw earlier let's just look at this craft file right so it has a runtime a root file system and a command and now let's check the run the craft file we have here cut craft file and you can see this is pretty large, right? So why is this? Because this is used to build the, the runtime. This was used to use the runtime and run it, but this is going to be used, well, it can also be used to run it, you have command here, but you can also use it for building. So when building it, you're going to mention, I'm going to use Unicraft from this repo, and then I'm going to use some other libraries, such as LWIP, this is the networking library, uh, libelf, this is the elf library. I'm going to use them to create this runtime, this image. And if you check the readme, it's going to tell you, uh, well, actually this is not, let's say this is not the way you're going to build the runtime. We, we don't have this instruction here, but currently what you can do is this. Let me see if I have a, I don't have anything. I'm going to use craft build and when I'm going to use craft build I'm also going to say I'm going to use I'm going to build this for platform QEMU and from for architecture S8664 okay what this will end up doing this will actually build the unikernel and the image uh, let me also do that just a sec let me run build kit source orgs unicraft catalog for maintainers okay this is just to have build kit uh, configured let's now build this i'm going to tell what this does so this is going to pull all the repositories and then this is going to build the actual kernel image what you now see it's configuring the the nginx uh, image and then it is going to build it meaning it's going to compile all the little pieces of code as you can see here the make file for it and now it's going to go through all of these different files it's pulling lwip it's patching it with the required parts it's going to pull uh, libelf also um, uh, patch it and then it's going to build it okay so you can see here cc this compiler this is actually building this is building the core building the applications is going through it's going to all the files and then the end of it all this is going to create the actual uh, kernel image the kernel image that eventually will get pushed to the registry 
and we'll get used. So what you see here, when we look into the craft file, this base image or something, this is something that was pre-built and then pushed and made available to us on the file, on the, uh, um, uh, on the registry, such that when we had these steps here, uh, let me see if I can grab them. No, I cannot. Um, it was step one, pull the base runtime. So when we did this step one, pull the base runtime, we pulled it from somewhere where it was pushed earlier. Okay. This is still being built. So it takes a bit. Note that it's, uh, I, I don't have that much of a, of a good system. I should have used the server. I'm going to use that in the, uh, in the future. I also have this 23.21. Yeah. Not a good, uh, not a good time to have, uh, uh, to have items built. Let's wait for it. Such a bad, bad, bad idea. Let me see if I can go to a server I have access to. Yeah, this, my, my laptop cannot handle, cannot properly handle this. Just a sec. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to nginx, oh, library, nginx, okay, at 1.25, and you're going to hear just how fast it's going to be, catalog for maintain, oh, it was start, okay, craft build minus minus plat, qimu minus minus arch, x86 underscore 64. Uh, I miss something. Uh, craft bills. What? Craft file. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong. Let me just see. Could not tell me what or how to build. Wasn't this a command I used here? Craft build minus minus plat. Okay, I'm going to check this out because this this is already started, so this is fine. And now you can see here this created two items. So if I look into Unicraft build, uh, we have here nginx. So this is the engine. This is the kernel itself. So if I go here, this is the actual kernel, and I also have the the file system, right? The, the interesting thing is that we have something that's called an embedded kernel. So the kernel itself is the actual kernel plus the file system. They are all embedded into a single image. That's why this is 40 megabytes and this is 15 megabytes because this, this one is basically a connection, a, a junction between the file system and, and this one. And now if I'm going to use craft run minus minus plat qimu minus minus arch xt underscore 64 xt 64 dot and I'm going to use minus mine minus p8080 map to port I think it's port 80 let me see is it port 8080 no it's port 80 okay it's going to run the image that I just built okay of course if you want to uh, and yeah because I forgot this is still on, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, so I'm going to run minus minus RM. Um, and I'm going to run it with minus minus log level debug, minus minus log type basic, as we saw earlier, just to get a glimpse of what's happening behind the scenes. And this is the command that's being used. So qimu 
uh, this is the command that's being used um, this is the kernel the one that we saw earlier so my, my actual path right and you can see there's no initial ram disk because this kernel is an embedded one which also contains the actual file system and now if i were to go somewhere else i would say curl localhost 8080 voila this is the nginx running instance and if i stop it here sorry it's no longer available so what i did here were some steps first of all is when I use craft build, so let's say for craft build, what does it do? It does the following. First, it builds the file system. It does that from the Docker file. Okay. Next, it configures the kernel. Configure the kernel. It does that from the craft file from all the configurations you saw there. If you recall the craft file, we have all of these configs that are available uh, here. It actually does this by several steps. Step 2.1 is pulls all the all required uh, repositories. Okay, and then point 2.2 point two configures repositories. Okay, and you can see here once again we are using the Apple floater, we are using the Unicraft core, we are using the LWAP and we are using libelf. Note once again these this this a lot of information so do not worry about not getting all of it. We're going to delve into that in the next sessions. So this is more of a high overview using craft. We're going to go deeper into these items in the next sessions. Right? So um uh, then it configures it and then in step number three this is actually going to be compiled the repositories the end of it so the result is going to be a kernel image and uh, that embeds the file system right so the file system and the kernel image are embedded we call this embedded in itrd okay and then i'm going to use craft run which is going to be basically something with similar to the others which is just going to um, start qemu with um, the kernel image generated above and the command from the craft file right the command that's stored here so root file system, this is only going to this is going to be used for build time. These are also going to be used for build time, right? These targets are going to be used for build time and runtime to decide how we want to build and run it. And this is going to be only used for runtime. So craft build and craft run. This is the way we're going we, we build runtimes. Again, I know it's kind of a lot of info and I do not expect everything to be 100%, maybe not even 50% clear at this point. We're going to reiterate on these items. So we're going to see how all of these items um, uh, work, work together. For now, note that we have these runtimes and then we can use those runtimes and we have build steps craft build we have run steps with craft run on the build step we make use of the craft file and the configurations the result of the build step is a runtime that incorporates the kernel and then on the run step we do two things we create the application file system and then we pull the runtime and then we run the application file system on top of that runtime. Okay. This is, this is based on the information we have on the craft file and on the Docker file. The Docker file is used to create the file system. The interesting thing here is that the runtime itself is typically also consisting of a base file system. So the, the runtime is the kernel 
plus some file system image when and you can then create additional layers of applications on top of that when you get the runtime imagine i want to get the python runtime i get the kernel plus the python libraries on top of that such that i mean I'm, i don't i'm not required to build all the, all the python libraries i just need to create my python application which is why for example if you look into the examples we have with node let's look into node 18 prisma here the craw file is very simple it says hey i'm going to use the runtime node this is the command i'm going to use but then the docker file this is a bit more complicated because this is going to say hey i'm going to install something from from node package json i'm going to pack up the required files i'm going to use npm for this copy the libraries and the application and then i'm going to run it so this is you expect the node runtime to be there but then what you're going to build is you're going to build the um uh, the node application on top of that and this is you know for example for java i think we have http java though do we i'm not sure if it's available yet no it's not available uh, HTTP Python, for example, Flask, right? So the, the runtime is very simple. I'm using Python. I'm using the fruit file system. This is the command I'm going to use. And then if I look in the Docker file, this is going to say, hey, I want these requirements. I want to install them. And then I'm going to copy the application together with the libraries to make this run. And the requirements files, it says, hey, you're going to require Flask and PySQLite to be able to interact with those. Again, I know it's a lot of info, but this is going to be slowly uh, digested once you go through all of these uh, sessions that, um, uh, well, that we have prepared. So once you go through this, you're going to get a lot of info on what's happening, run these commands, and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Before we end this intro, and I have something else to add, if there are questions from your side. Okay, then if not, something else to note. Um, when running things locally, this is, well, a bit, a bit complicated because it depends on the, on the system you have access to. On my side, I have a basic Linux system, so this makes everything work okay for me. But note that for, uh, you're going to bump into some issues if you're using WSL or Mac OS or anything like that. For that, we're going to talk on case by case basis. Ideally, what you would use is you would use a base Linux system. If you don't have access to that, you're, you're going to bump into some problems. If you don't use a QEMU version that's larger than, let's say, 1.1.2. So you need this, I mean, you can still get away with some uh, with an earlier Kimu version, but if not, if you're using Kimu uh, uh, with a version that's before 8.1.2, that's going to cause you some, some headaches. We're going to discuss them individually. This is why when using Craft Cloud, things are so easy because when you use Craft Cloud, everything happens on the cloud. Everything is configured there. Everything is, is running properly. But on your system, it depends on the environment. It depends on the Kimu version, a lot of items. So if you aren't using a basic Linux system, uh, what I would suggest is you um, have make available, if either build or grab from some, somewhere, a Kimu version that's larger than 8.1.2. Because if not, we're going to bump into some problems. You can start with that 
and then as problems appear, we're going to solve them individually to um, uh, to be able to properly run uh, run stuff locally. Firecracker should be okay, but Kimu may have these uh, these problems. You're going to you're going to bump into those once you um, are going to go here into using the application catalog. Once you bump into problems, we're going to solve them uh, on a case by case basis as they as they appear. This is just a, a, as a heads up for you. Okay. Um, if there are any other questions or remarks. If not, then let me stop the recording.